Hello everybody, in uh, this video we will look how to deploy a JVPN business application um, to Docker uh, locally. As I'm running on OSX, this will be a little bit specific for running on OSX, however all the commands uh, that you get by generating um, a JVPN business application are going to be uh, runnable on both Unix, OS X, and Windows. Um, we will start off again um, by looking at start.jpm.org. This is your starting point for generating a JPM business application. So you would either generate the default business app, which will include some of the default settings, or you will go to configure in order to select um, your specific configuration that you want to generate the app with. Um, for this uh, demo, I also want to show again our GitHub repository for business applications, uh, which includes uh, a number of examples or demos called samples, um, and also all the tutorial um, source code that uh, you can go through and learn from in this uh, these tutorials follow also the documentation about JVPM business application that you can find in the JVPM documentation. So let's get started. Um, the first thing that you have to do in order to run a JVPM business app on Docker is of course install Docker. And for that you go to docker.com, you click on get started um, and down here you can go ahead and download Docker and install it for your um, operating system use. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, once you've done that, in this case we've done this already for uh, OS X, you will have um, a, what they call Docker desktop running and you will get a little icon on the top here. Um, one of the things to do um, that actually is, is useful is go to preferences and go to Kubernetes and you want to enable Kubernetes. Now this is an optional step. Uh, you do not need to do it. Uh, your JVPM business application will be able to deploy um, on Docker without this. Uh, however, it helps. Uh, when clicking this, it will take about a minute or two, at least it did for me locally. Um, to start the Kubernetes cluster and, and, and download everything that it needs for that. So this is pretty much the only setting you have to change from the default installation and um, and again it's an optional step that you don't really have to do. So you make sure that you have your um, <clears throat> Docker desktop running and at this point you can either go to JPM, start jpm.org and generate a new application. But for sake of this, so we can actually show um, something, we will go ahead and, for example, use this sample dashboard time leaf already example that we have. So let's click on that. Um, when we come here, we can go ahead and clone it locally. So you just copy this URL. And then what we can do is say git clone URL. So that will give us our sample dashboard time leaf um, demo. Once we go there, this is simply generated just like you can use uh, the default application as well from startjpm.org, but you will get your three modules, the KJAR, your uh, model module, and your service module. At this point, what we want to do is we want to go to sample dashboard time leaf service. And if you see here, you have your launch scripts. They launch SH for the Unix, Linux, and OS X environments, and your launch.bat um, for Windows environment. So if you're on Windows, uh, again, you would install your Docker locally, and you would run the same command I'm about to run. However, you would use, use launch.bat instead of launch.sh. So what we're going to do is we're going to say launch.sh clean install and this will basically uh, go ahead and compile our KJAR module, compile our model, compile our service module 
and then go ahead and start the service module as it is a Spring Boot application. So if we wanted to run this locally without Docker, this would be the command to run. Um, to go ahead and install, um, to create an image, and also install this uh, on a, as a Docker container, you want to do dash P, this is profile, and we want to say Docker, and we have to give it um, a database. So we do a comma, and then we use the in-memory H2 database. So when we press this and go ahead and run it, this will go through the usual steps first, which is compiling everything. And again, we're getting some updates from Nexus, which is okay. Um, another thing that will, will happen after the compilation, uh, the build will start generating the Docker image uh, for our application. And at the same time, it will create uh, a local Maven repository. This Maven repository is going to contain all the dependencies that our business application needs. So once our Docker image is created and we install it onto um, as a container on Docker, um, you can run your application offline as well because it will contain all the dependencies that it needs. So once it's installed, there is no more um, there is no more need to download any more dependencies that your business application needs. All right. So this went through the process. As you can see, uh, we are got uh, we. It says launching the application as Docker container, okay, and it's given us uh, our container ID. So what we can do now is we can say Docker logs dash f and give it our container ID, and we can see uh, the logs of our application. <coughs> and it say it says it started. Now, some other of useful Docker commands that we can do is we can say docker container ls, which will give us all our containers currently running. And since our application study has started, we can already go ahead and access it under localhost 8090 for this is slash demo. And here is our business application, in this case, the uh, dashboard then. So, you know, we can go ahead and start this business process um, and uh, we can run it just like we did locally. So, and here we go, we have a process instance and let's take a look at its image and we see it went through our script task and completed at this point. That's why its state is 2 which is complete. Um, when you're done, one thing to notice, we want to, uh, we can stop our container. We can say Docker, so stop and give it our ID. All right, so at this point, our application should no longer be running and our logs um, can do, you know, we, we, we stop transactional recovery manager, we stopped our application. So that was completed. Now, one thing to notice, it is always good to remove this container uh, before building your application again using uh, dash p docker comma h2 because uh, it will try to generate the same ID often and it will tell you that this container uh, with this particular ID already exists. So what we want to do is docker rm and there you go so we've deleted this docker and at this point you can go make changes to application and go build it again which um, will again go through the process of creating the offline maven repository or, or your <coughs> image of your application and deploy it onto dock. Uh, I hope this short video was useful to you um, again you can go to jbpm.org 
um, and click on the big button here start with business applications read through it um, and also this will give you um, the links here for the documentation where we go into a lot more details about business applications um, go to our business applications uh, module uh, repository of github to get your examples to demos the tutorials and uh, i think with that you're pretty much good to go with uh getting started with generating your jpm business apps all right thank you very much and uh, have a great day bye